budget brain teasers, police procedurals, and historical happenings. All this and more as the Stafford Weekly News starts now. Welcome to the Best of Community edition of the Stafford Weekly News. I'm Randall Williams. This season opened with SMSD's budget being approved for the school year, but it was a hard process with ramifications for the coming year. On August 21st, SMSD passed its budget for the coming year. And recently we spoke to Superintendent Robert Bostick about why this was a difficult year. So this year, we had some serious challenges with compiling the budget and getting things together because the state put in all kinds of roadblocks and obstacles that we have just not had before. Uh, we've had things like uh, having to get a maximum compressed tax rate that we had to get before we can even come up with the tax rate or calculate the tax rate, but we also had to wait for things like the Texas legislature to come out of session after the second special session to decide that they wanted to do an additional $100,000 tax break for tax taxpayers, which I think is a great idea on first blush, but everything is always in the details, especially when it comes to things like public schools. One of the challenges that we ran into was first of all, having to incorporate those tax breaks that were there from each of the different county appraisal districts because in, in, in Stafford, we have two county appraisal districts. We have the Fort Bend County Appraisal District and we also have the Harris County Appraisal District. They give us the appraised tax value for any of the houses, any of the buildings, any of the businesses in our taxable area. In the past, many years ago, we were able to basically uh, ask taxpayers for about a dollar and four cents per hundred dollars of valuation. Uh, when they started, when the legislature started to compress the tax rate, it's gone down now to we can only tax 68 cents. For the taxpayer, that's great. But for the schools that, uh, that operate off those taxes, that means that our revenue went down significantly. And then the other part for us was we couldn't get it in a timely manner. So we had to get it kind of at the last moment after they had gone through the second special session. And then uh, besides giving the tax cuts, they didn't give any revenue increases to deal with things like inflation or in Stafford, things like recapture, where all of a sudden we needed to pay a two, we needed to pay $2 million and cut a $2 million check and that $2 million had to be cut immediately back by August 15th. So that was a serious impact to us. The way I like to look at it, if, if you're not used to dealing with this kind of work every day, is I like saying that it's, it's being on a fixed income. You know, I've got a mom, my mom's uh, over 80. She gets the same amount every month. No matter whether things cost more or cost less, she gets the same amount every month, every year, no changes. That's kind of what the state does for public schools. They give us a, they put us on a fixed income and that's kind of where we are. The problems that, uh, that I think will continue to kind of dog public schools, no matter what uh, has occurred is, if the legislature continues to fail to act to fund public schools, you're gonna have, you know, larger classrooms because we won't be able to afford that. You're gonna have probably some um, uh, decrease in some programming that we have around there. So some of the programs that are not included in what we call the basic programs that the state of Texas pays for in their formula. Because in order to come up with that fixed income amount, they have designated basically how much they'll pay per student and what kind of programs are required by the state through the state's curriculum and those kind of things, which we follow. We're willing to follow those and we're assessed on those. But the things that they don't uh, assess and they don't pay for are some of those things that I call that are like value added. Um, so the state doesn't pay for, you know, anything that we do with infant care in Stafford. We do that. We think it's that's the right thing to do, right? And so that's what we do. The state does not pay for, you know, for 
pre-K instruction, uh, they'll pay for part of it uh, for pre-K instruction. But we think pre-K instruction is smart because that's, that's what helps to raise our academics. It also helps to make sure the kids are on a good and level footing. So we, we've done what's there. But those are things that we have to look at and evaluate. Uh, things like we've got a great um, early college program. We're, like right now, we have put out so many outstanding early college graduates, and uh, we've done it with our, our tax dollars here uh, for, for, for years now. I think, I've, I think this is my fourth or fifth year getting this out. And not, what, we had 78. I mean, we're getting close to We've cut over, we've got more than a third of the senior class with associate's degrees before they get high school. That's not fully covered. That's not covered by state money. So we always have to supplement that program with dollars that we would get through the state that we now no longer get. I've never had a kid who ever asked, or a parent who said, please give me the best second or third class education that you can give me. Never had a person give me that. No one. I've been in education for almost 40 years, and I can guarantee you I've never had anyone tell me that. I think that it would be wise for our elected officials to really ask those questions uh, as they're going into not only the voting booth, but or voting on the House floor or on the Senate floor, to ask the difficult questions, to see what's in there, because I really just hope and believe that their intent is not to hurt public schools, because in Texas, they're doing a pretty good job with public schools, and there are challenges, but believe me, that, but local control where schools, school boards, like our school board and our city council, because we're the only municipal school district in the state of Texas, they weigh in very often with me and the administration on you know, every dollar that's spent, the programs that are being run, things that are happening. And those are the things that are affected. And uh, it's, it's, it's painful and challenging when I can't give them a, an answer that I think would have some solid footing that even deals with things that I would say with integrity and say, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So I don't really think this is a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to hurt public schools, even if it's unintentional. And if it is un unintentionally, you know, to make some moves to change it to, to, and to prioritize public schools that are in the Texas Constitution for the things that we're doing, and, and they can check that but to provide education for all kids. I'd like to do that. Have you ever been eating sushi and thought, this is good, but I really wish it would rock more? Well, we have good news for you with the opening of a new Stafford restaurant in September. We're here at Rock and Roll uh, Sushi. We're so excited to have Rosie and KD as community partners. It's an exciting day, not only for Stafford, but for them at this ribbon cutting ceremony. So if you're passing through on South Main, stop by, you'll get some uh, great food and you'll really meet some really wonderful people that have chosen Stafford to, to place their business. So come on by, thank you. I'm the founder of the company. Uh, we started 14 years ago. My wife is the co-founder. Uh, we started in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, Chase here and his wife have been with us virtually since day one. Uh, and it's just, been a, it's just been a growing family of people. Uh, we've, we've built a network of a family from Alabama to Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, you know, we, we expand with people that we love. We've got Katie and Rosie here that's our operating partners here. And uh, they live here. Their kids go to school here. So we just love the Texas hospitality. That's what brought us here. We've got stores in Cypress and also in Spring. So we, we love this community. We are located at 3607 South Main Street, Stafford, Texas. We're Suite 112. And we hope to see y'all soon. Yeah. Okay. You know, it, it came from really going and seeing the same exact thing every time we would go eat sushi. We said, you know what? There's got to be a fun a twist to this. So we basically took the same traditional concept, blended it with some rock and roll, and it turned out to be a pretty good mix. Hello, 
my name is Alice Chen, Stanford City Council member. Today we are here to join the grand opening ceremony for Rock and Roll, Ru Sushi Place. This is amazing sushi because the owner, Lance, he have a, this is a French fries around the country, and they have a 66 store around the country, and only have three in, in Texas, and Stanford is one of them. So I was so excited because we don't have a very nice sushi place in Stafford, so I want to let everybody know, come to the store to see to eat the best sushi in Stafford. And also, I want to wish the owner have a good business, because good business bring more South Tech to our city. I want to thank you, Rock and Roll Sushi, and please join the Rock and Roll anytime. The owners say they will offer the best sushi for Stafford residents only. So come to join us. Thank you. We, we we cater to everyone. If you are looking for something more on the traditional side, we have that. We also have cooked stuff, everything in between. So we, we, I always like to think you can walk in here and see a postman sitting by a teacher, by a kid. It, it's, uh, you know, we, we try to appeal to all demographics and ages. Venerating veterans, next. In Stafford, diversity is not just a number, it's who we are. When you are here, you become part of the story. You can sleep well knowing we're always on the job and looking out for you. It's a great place for growth and opportunity. Tradition starts here. We teach your children and we stick around for your grandchildren. We are one, we are Stafford. This is the city of Stafford and we are one. Crime is an unfortunate fact of life. We just hope it doesn't happen to us. But a major crime took place in October here in Stafford, and our police department raced against time to save a life. Recently, the Stafford Police Department held a press conference about a major local crime. Um, on Wednesday, September 27, 2023, at approximately 6.04 a.m., the Stafford Police Department received a call in reference to a kidnapping at the 1700 block of Pecan Lane. Upon arrival, patrol officers made contact with the victim's husband, who stated his wife was leaving for work when she was attacked by three men outside. The three men scuffled with his wife, forced her into her own vehicle and left the location. The husband attempted to help his wife, however, they pointed a firearm at him, at which point he retreated. Shortly after, the suspects demanded a ransom payment of $10,000 or threatened to cause bodily injury to his wife. Detectives made location and learned that a neighbor observed a suspicious vehicle parked around the corner. Um, he described it as a black, rim, black Dodge Ram pickup truck. Uh, we were able to utilize surveillance and video cameras nearby where we located the suspect's black Ram pickup truck along with the victim's vehicle that had hit the same cameras multiple times. Uh, with the help of the FBI, we were able to locate uh, the victim's last known location via her cellular network or cellular data. Uh, which was in the Sugarland area. Uh, we contacted the Sugarland Police Department for assistance, and they were able to locate camera footage of both vehicles traveling together. The owner of the Black Ram pickup was identified as Brian Rodriguez. Um, during the investigation, the detectives learned that the victim actually formerly actually worked with Brian Rodriguez in the past. Uh, we were able to get Brian's contact information, and again, with the help of the FBI, we were able to pinpoint his cell phone uh, on Galveston Island. We contacted the Galveston Police Department, uh, who was able to locate the Black Ram pickup truck, and they were able to rescue the victim. When they found the victim, uh, she, her head was covered with a black sheet, her hands were tied behind her back, and they placed five suspects in custody. They were identified as Jose Gonzalez Hernandez, also known as Brian Rodriguez, Claudia Elizabeth Rojas, who is the wife of Jose Gonzalez Hernandez, Pablo Mendez Cruz, Kelvin Gustavo Cruz, and Williams Noe Redondo Ramirez. Received a call at 6 a.m. and we located the victim at about 1 p.m. That is extraordinary. It, it's a, it was a collaborative effort between multiple law enforcement agencies the city of Stafford Police Department took lead in the investigation. Our detectives did a phenomenal job. Um, they worked as a team back there. 
and with the help of the FBI, the Sugar Land Police Department, and the Galveston Police Department, they were able to save a life. And for that, our detectives deserve to be commended. It goes back to the saying, if you see something, say something. Um, the neighbors next door to um, where this incident unfolded, very vigilant. They saw something that seemed out of place to them. They told us, and that is how we were able to locate this victim. For Stafford Weekly News, this is Randall Williams. Veterans Day was November 11th. It's an important American tradition to honor those who served and sacrificed for our country. This year, the celebration moved to City Hall. Color Guard attention, room attention. Color Guard forward march. That is great. Thank you so much. So it's my pleasure to present to you our first ever Stafford historian, Miss Sadie Williams, who will give us a brief history on the Veterans Day and specifically for Stafford. Every November 11th, we gather to recognize the bravest of our citizens, the many people who have served in the military in the name of our freedom. I've been in the Stafford residence for over 50 years, and I am a veteran. I think it is very important and very appreciative of us veterans to have the Parks uh, Committee, the City of Stafford, and the Knights of Columbus put on this celebration for veterans on Veterans Day. We appreciate it very much. We think it's very important to be recognized. So thank you very much, citizens of Stafford, for putting up this recognition of veterans of foreign wars and stateside veterans. Thank you. I'm the commander for the VFW Post 4010, and we'd like to thank everybody that, around Stafford for presenting this trophy to us, this plaque, and uh, we, we're honored to have it. This day is the Veterans Day, and that's for all the veterans, it's all for all of us. And uh, we appreciate everybody honoring us and respecting us this day. It is a pleasure to have all of you out here. I wanna make sure we're recognizing our elected officials and other honorees, especially our veterans, but I'll start with our mayor. I am very glad we are honoring the veterans every year, and today happens to be that day and I am glad all these people came here honoring them because they deserve it. They, are, they were the ones who put their lives online to protect us, protect our country. So that's the reason we, our country is together today and that is the reason the price they paid is the main reason that we are enjoying the liberty today. We are here today to celebrate the Veteran Days. We always remember, freedom is not free. The, the mentoring of our military servers put their life on the line to protect freedom we enjoy. They, they put their life for our country too. So we wanna be special thanks for all the veterans. Thank you for your commitment and your service and your sacrifice. Um, today, we're here to go ahead and honor our veterans. It's a very important day because of the service that they provided for our community, as well as those who went ahead and paid the ultimate price. We give, we should be giving them thanks every day, but today we highlight and honor their commitment and what they've done for our communities and our people and our families. Happy Veterans Day. This is a day where it's about reflection, thinking about those that served. Personally, I have had both my family, my grand, both of my granddads, my granddad on my mom's side, he served in the Korean War. He was one of the first uh, officers to actually work in the desegregated uh, army, and he was an officer. Thank y'all for what y'all do. Thank you. I'd like special remembrance for my dad who has passed away. He uh, served in the Coast Guard, went in in the early 40s. 
Veterans Day is very important. Uh, being on the Parks Committee as the chair, we wanted to have our first event to honor our veterans, to make sure that they receive the respect and the uh, honor that they deserve because they have sacrificed or been willing to sacrifice their lives, uh, putting themselves in harm's way. And we're so grateful for those that made it home. We want to honor all of the people that have served uh, from Stafford and throughout the country. Cookie commencement next. You can try, but you won't find another city like Stafford, Texas. Serving our community just like you like it. Taking care of you and your home since 1945. We believe in STEM to learn and STEM to earn. We're heading into college certified and career ready. As a former student of Stafford, I take pride in keeping our classroom safe. We are Stafford, we are one. The Stafford Historical Society has been preserving the city's history for, well, let's just say a long time. And the major force behind it for many years is Sadie Williams. Sean Pettit sat with her for a few questions. The mayor's mother was, was at the time president of the Historical Society. And she said, I'm getting old. She said, I'm almost 95. You need to take over and you need to, uh, you've got a lot of history. So I don't know, I kind of followed in her footsteps, I guess, and then started, you know, started doing that. I lived in Stafford most of my life. When grandma and grandpa first moved here, they first lived out on Mueller Road off of uh, Murphy Road. And um, they didn't even have time to unpack the truck. And neighbors were coming over bringing them things like a big bag of potatoes or, you know, I mean, you could make a meal with potatoes, right? And, uh, and so people were very friendly just at the beginning, you know. My grandpa and grandma had moved here on this property. Um, she had her 10th child and she died. So grandpa was left with 10 kids to raise and he did a lot of truck farming. And then the kids, and he had a, a big barn out here. Uh, I remember that barn so well. Um, anyway, uh, a good place to play hide and seek. So you could go in the barn, nobody ever suspected you were in there. But uh, every one of the children had a chore to do. And uh, my mother was the baker and the cook in the house. I guess I would have to say I wished I was, I was just, you know, a toddler, but I wished I was older when they were doing that gambling and bootlegging, because I think that was very interesting. You know, the gambling and them, um, you know, they have so many interesting stories to tell, you know, and they, and they still tell them, you know. So it's really, to me, that was probably one of the most interesting times. They seem to always bond together, like our church had been destroyed by a hurricane. And, you know, they all get together and they had money for their bootlegging, but don't think they had money for the church. They always supported the church. They were big time givers. And, and spenders and, you know, it, it was rewarding to see that, you know, to see them give so much to a place that they loved, you know. We've always seemed to be close-knit, like you said, and everybody care for one another, and it's just been remarkable. Do you have anything you want to say to the citizens of Stafford? No, I would just like to say it's just to get involved to get involved with the school, the city, or both, 
And you really can do both. I've been doing both for quite a few years and I love it. Do you like cookies? Everybody likes cookies, right? Well, Stafford has a new place to get warm, out of the oven cookies. It's in the grid and Sean Pettit was there because he likes cookies. Stafford Tips Treats Grand Opening. This is our 21st Houston store, and we recently opened earlier this month, and we had our grand opening celebration today. We were selling tickets for $5. We had a local charity that we partnered with. Gigi's Playhouse was here. They joined us at the event today. They are amazing, super sweet people. I'm not exactly sure how it came about, aside from that I think one of the store managers volunteers at our location. And so we're about 90% volunteer driven at Gigi's Playhouse. So we get a, quite a few community members who know who we are. So we were selling cookies dozens for $5 and all proceeds were being donated to Gigi's Playhouse. We were selling up to 700 dozen. We sold nearly 700 dozen today, so that's amazing. All proceeds will be donated, donated to Gigi's Playhouse. And we, we were just so excited. We had an amazing crowd out here. We had the first 100 people in line received a $50 gift card to Tiff Streets. We had a raffle that was going on. Anyone in line by 8.45 in the morning was entered into the raffle and it was a grand prize of $250 gift card, a $200 gift card for our second place winner, and then a $100 gift card for our third place winner. And we had all of our winners, a lot of fun stuff as well. We had some fun music going on. We had people dancing. We had people really excited to be here. We also had some trivia going on. We were asking some Tiff's trivia. And she baked him some warm cookies. And that was the first warm cookie delivery in our company. People got to win some kind of Scott prizes. They got to win a Tiff's t-shirt, a Tiff's tote bag. Just a lot of fun goodies. Just a lots of fun, feel good overall event. It was an incredible turnout. We had 100 people in line before nine in the morning. So that was amazing. It was great to see the community come together for, for our event and to benefit Gigi's Playhouse. We try to be out and about in the community. Um, one of our missions is to bring awareness about Down syndrome to the community. Opened in 2015 and we're now on our third space um, because we keep growing and finding more and more families who need our services. I am a huge fan of Tiff Streets. Um, I wish I had more time to bake myself, so if you can't do it though, Tiff Streets are the best, and especially when they get served with their cold milk. <laughs> Say you love their cookies? I love cookies! So we started Gigi's because of my daughter Sadie. Um, when she was born, we did not know she was gonna have Down syndrome, and we were looking for resources and just wanting something that um, was not only for her, but for our family and for me as a mom as well. And so we found them just online and researched and really appreciated that they believed in all individuals, not just the cute little babies, but adults and wanted to provide them um, amazing opportunities. And we just felt it was what we were called to do. All of our programs are free, so we don't charge anything for our families. So anything people can do to help us is amazing. I love Gigi's, I love Tess Reese. What's your favorite type of cookie? Chocolate chip. We were expecting over two to 300 people. Normally for our grand opening events, we have 100 to 250 people for sure coming. Um, and we surpassed that today. So it was incredible to see the community come together once again and just enjoy this event. Um, it was great. And we're really excited to be part of this community. That's a wrap on our news for this week. Thank you for joining us. For everyone here at Stafford Weekly News, I'm Randall Williams. Happy New Year, and may all your news be good news. This program was produced on the Stafford campus of Houston Community College.